We've just seen the two most recent videos from Sade's album, The Promise, but right now with me in the studio is Steve Kilby from The Church. Hi, Steve. Hi. How do you feel about the new album? I'm really happy with it. Um, everyone seems to like it and people are coming along. We're playing a lot of it at our shows and no one's sort of yelling out for the old stuff, so it seems to have done the trick. Yeah. You worked with an English producer, Peter Walsh. Yeah. How did that come about? Um, I just always had this um, sort of bug in me that I wanted to work with Peter Walsh uh, since I heard New Gold Dream, which I thought was a, quite a revelation. And From Simple Minds? Yeah. Is that the only thing you were impressed by? Um, of his work? No, there was another album which I heard later on called Climate of Hunter by Scott Walker, oh. which is a really strange kind of moody album. And um, he just, everything that he did sort of had this really sort of dreamy, luxurious feel to it. And I thought, you know, that's that could sort of be applied to the church quite easily. Yeah, exactly. And yet it's really very powerful and um, very, um, a very strong album. So he's yeah, brought that yeah. out as well, which is, I guess, the sort of thing he's done with Simple Minds. Yeah, um, I think he's. I think he's a bit like one of those perfumes that smells differently according to who's wearing. On different it. people. Yeah. Oh, that's um, interesting. Like, um, you know, it didn't. It didn't sort of get too dreamy. It's, he, he did sort of maintain the kind of the energy there, but he put this nice. And it didn't sort of. It wasn't too um, harsh or aggressive. It sort of had this nice sort of um, depth to it. Yeah. Had he known of, of your work prior to, to what you're doing right now? I think he'd vague, vaguely heard of us, but um, when we approached him, he said, um, send me over all your old albums, and we went, oh. Sent up, well, we sent them over and he, he, he liked it. And did he come over here or did you go to him in England? No, he came over here. Oh, great. Stayed here for three months, ended up falling in love with the place. That often happens, yeah. and they buy buy some buy a place um, on Sydney Harbour. Yeah, well, that's I think that's what he's gonna. <laughs> yeah, he's thinking yeah, about. Yeah, so it happens a lot. Um, Heyday has received very good reviews here in Australia, but it always, or you, or the church always receive fantastic reviews in America. Why is it that you're so popular in America? Um, I think, I think that the thing is that we grew up in public a bit in Australia, and um, you know, some people a bit sort of. Yeah, you know, I'm not too sure whether to, you know, to like us or not. And I think in America we're sort of this unknown quantity that just seemingly making these records out of the blue and um, people sort of reviewing them with no preconception. Mm. Um, I mean, other than that, I, it's, I don't know. Do you think there are many bands in America who have the same um, idea about playing this slightly 60s sound? Are they doing that now? Yeah, yeah, there's... I don't think there's anyone quite like us. Mm. Um, I, there are a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of bands that are real purists with the 60s sound, and that's all they're doing. And they're trying. I mean, they, they're recording tech. They're using a 24-track studio to try and make it sound like it was done on a four-track, you know, with really sort of tinny drums and things. Whereas the Church have always tried to sort of take the best from from all periods mm. and like. Anything that we can use, we'll use. We certainly don't want our records to sound like they were made 20 years ago. Um, normally, uh, you have done most of the writing for the band, and yet this time, the other members have had a hand in contributing. In fact, yeah. the, the majority of the album is, um, is a complete band product. Yeah. Um, how did this come about? Why is the change? I just thought it was time to do it this way because the, um, you know, it's just the old thing of many hands make light work and, uh, you know, if you've got four people's ideas on something, it's always going to be better than one. And uh, it was my suggestion, actually, to do it this way and, uh, you know, I had some backup songs in case it didn't work, but never you needed to dig into them because it just, when we started writing, it just sort of happened really quickly. Yeah, well the album has a very confident sound and certainly has a new energy. Do you think perhaps now that the rest of the band are contributing that um, they also will have or they might identify even more strongly with the music from this album than they have done? Oh, uh, I think, you know, I think that's inevitable that that would happen. Yeah. Like it's, you know, they're our songs instead of my songs. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it, that's the, probably the one thing that shows in this album to, to the others. Yeah. Not that the, the music has changed greatly at all. I just think there's some little essence there which is like 100% everyone's for it. Oh, I agree. And it comes I across. agree with that, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. There's another song there which is written by a person called Jansen. Who's Jansen? Um, that's my girlfriend, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. 
yeah, she she and I write some songs together. Is that the first song you've written together? Uh, no, we have. We, that's the first song that's ever sort of happened. Um, we've written a few songs together, and she sort of um, helps me do sort of more melodic type things. Sort of keeps my mind on doing something sort of concise and poppy. Yeah, it's a very strong song. Youth worshipper. Yeah, yeah, youth worshipper. Yeah. It is. I was sort of giving up on it all the time. I was thinking, oh, it's. I don't know. And she was saying, no, it's a good one. Let's do it. Let's keep going with it. No, I thought there's. I think there's really quite a few singles on the album, um, and yet there's some some other songs there that obvi obviously are for the album listener at home. Um, I think the instrumental is very beautiful. The um, happy hunting ground. Happy, happy hunting ground. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Beautiful. That'll never be released as a single. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, it's bad no, enough trying to get your records played yeah. now without sort of saying, "Here's a sort of a, this loopy instrumental for you to play." Yeah. Do you think sometimes that Australian audiences can be um, a bit nationalistic, where a band they work here for so many years and they go overseas and they they try to 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 make a name for themselves or they try to work a new audience away when they actually come back if they've been away for quite some time that the audience either makes it a bit harder for them or they they abandon them sometimes. It, I, I've seen it something like that happen. I'm not mm. too sure how you. I don't I don't think there's really a formula with what audiences do. I don't think they sort of they behave en masse or have any. I don't think the audience have a, have a philosophy, you know. Um, I mean, we've been away twice, and every time we come back, they, you know, they seem to like us no more or no less than when we went away. Um, and like, you can look at other bands, and some of them go to America and they come back here, and they love them, and others go away and come back, and they don't like them anymore. So I think it, it all depends on, um, you know, your your own particular crowd. I think our crowd would sort of like us whether we went. Sort of lived in Antarctica for sort of six months, or no matter what happens. Yeah. Have have your experiences going to Europe and and America had a big effect on the band? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely the tour of America. Um, we were sort of hitting a fairly low spot, and I think we sort of went to America and rediscovered ourselves because we were just um, the audiences there really give sort of give a lot back. You know, you sort of play and they. Um, they're very enthusiastic and they sort of, you sort of get into this nice thing where they're trying to impress you and you start trying to really impress them. And um, sort of halfway through the tour we thought, hold on, you know, we are actually playing quite well and uh, let's try this out when we get back to Australia, you know. We'll really go on stage and try our very, very hardest to sort of play a good show. Runs of wandering on and, you know, um, of drifting through the performance. Yeah, you're currently touring. Yeah. And how yeah. long will this go for? Well, we're doing th three weeks in Australia. We're going to do a Sydney and Adelaide and Brisbane, and then um, this Echo and the Bunnymen tour has come through at the last moment. And where's that? That's um, three weeks around America, sort of 5,000, 15,000 seaters with us playing before them. It's great. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. <laughs>